Hey all you addicts out there, welcome back to another Addicted Fishing Tutorial. My name is Jordan Kinnigan. If you guys are new to this channel, go down here and hit subscribe, hit that little bell notification, and give us a thumbs up to get these videos out there. We're Addicted Fishing, we aim to entertain and inspire and educate anglers like you to go out and have more fun on the river. Today's an educational piece and it's a head-to-head -head battle in between spinners and spoons. We're going to talk about the differences, the kind of water you want to use them in, and the effectiveness of either one. Stay tuned if you guys want to learn more about how to fish spinners and spoons, it's coming at you right now. So there's a lot of different variations of spinners and spoons. There's a lot of designs, there's different weights, there's different sizes, and of course there's different colors. But what we're going to cover first about this today is the differences in between a spinner and a spoon. Obviously, if, if those of you out there have never seen any of these before, a spinner is a bell body or a torpedo body design that actually has components that slide onto a piece of wire and is bent up to actually keep all that stuff intact. And this is the difference, is it actually spins. So this one here is what we call a bell body spinner. This is a Blue Fox, this is an R&B, these are a steelhead slammer design. And you can see the differences in between each one other than size. It's the shape and it's the profile. So the R&B here we have is like a bullet body. This is a different kind of style of spinner that actually gets down to the bottom a little bit differently. If you guys want to learn more about how to specifically fish these spinners and bullet bodies in particular, go to our YouTube channel, check out some of the videos of the how to's to fish spinners and spoons, and we'll cover more on what and how we actually fish these. I'm going to take you guys to the river after we're done talking about the whys and hows and actually show you how to fish them. But the differences in between the two immediately are going to be one has a spinner blade and one is an actual just a single blade or a spoon. You can obviously see that difference just off, off hand here. So the main difference is spinners have blades and spoons are just the blade itself. And the way you fish them is going to be different because of that. So going to the spoon end here, what we have here are some P-line spoons, old fashioned steely. These are some of the oldest school you know, spoons in the books. Um, and all different kinds of spoons work, whether it's a cast master, whether it's a, a, you know, a, a typical salmon steelhead spoon, or whether it's one of these steelies like this. What you're gonna wanna do differently with the spoons is just match your weight to the kind of water that you're fishing. And what you can see here, but I mean by weight, is what, like this one here is a two fifth ounce spoon, where this one here next to it is a two thirds ounce spoon. So the two thirds obviously thicker, heavier, it's gonna get down faster in deep water. And the two, the two fifth is obviously thinner, a little bit lighter, and it's gonna fish a lot better in some kind of shallower water where you're gonna wanna fish this. The real divider between a spinner and spoon is the kind of water that you're gonna wanna fish it in. A spinner is a much more versatile presentation. You can fish it in fast water, slow water, deep water, shallow, whereas the spoon, you need a more typical steelhead or salmon run or trout run where you have a steady current with good structure that you you can actually swing the spoon across. So that makes it a less versatile presentation in my opinion, is where the spinner can be fished in all different types of water. The other difference you can see here is that the spoons have, have swivels on them and the spinners do not. The spinners I do not like to fish with a swivel on them because I want that blade to spin and I want that blade to engage immediately when it hits the water. That way that thing can start working and get down in the strike zone in front of those fish. And you can see like I have this one rigged up here, I don't have a swivel on it. Or the spoon, you need that swivel so that you can get the, the rapid action and that loping action that you need to attract the fish and get down in the strike zone. The other difference you can see here is that I have a side wash hook on all these, which is different from the, the treble hook that you see here on this Blue Fox spinner. With the spoons, it's very imperative because you're gonna want these presentations down on the bottom. Spinner as well, but the spinner can be fished suspended a little bit better than a spoon can. The spoon you really want down close to the bottom, almost hitting the bottom and swooping back and forth over the rocks and over the structure. Whereas the spinner, you can fish suspended or you can fish in fast water where you're not necessarily gonna be hitting the bottom. But the first thing I do when I get a new spoon out of the box, you can see this one, you can immediately see the difference in the hooks here. One is, is your typical out of the box hook and the other is a 2 watt must add side wash hook. And these I swear by and I always preach because of the difference in the shape. You can immediately see right off the bat the difference in that shape of the hook and the outcropping of that hook in itself. The outcropping and the difference in the shape allows you to have a lot better hookup. One thing about spoons is it's very easy to lose fish on them, especially if you have a low quality hook. You can see how this one, I can almost bend it back and forth. It's a very wide gap and has a long shank, which allows that fish to grab that hook and uses that shank to its advantage and actually roll off of the hook easily, rather than using these two out side wash where you can see almost has that interned eye where that fish is gonna grab, that thing's gonna bury in its lip and it's not gonna be going anywhere. So first thing I do when I get to the river is I'm gonna open my snap ring. I'm gonna take that original hook off 
And you can either add a swivel to this and then add your hook on the back end, but a lot of times I just take the hook, I put it right through the snap ring there, I take my Gerber pliers again, and I pinch that close, making sure it's completely shut, as you can see there, so that that, that snap ring doesn't actually have the opportunity to, to roll around and actually pull that hook right off. I've had it happen many times by not put, crimping that down hard enough. So having a good pair of pliers like these Gerbers help you really get that on there so that that hook won't be rolling off of there. So as you can see on the rest of these, I have these Mustad hooks. And really why I do that with the spinners also is so that I can get those down next to the bottom. I'm not snagging up like I do when I have three points of contact like so with this treble hook. So I usually cut the treble hook off, add a side wash, and then I get to fishing. The rod selection you're gonna want for this is something that's very sensitive. A fast action rod that's about nine and a half to 10 foot long, anything over 10 foot or, or under eight foot is gonna lose a lot of sensitivity while you're fishing. The rod I have in my hands here is an Okuma X, eight to 17 pound, nine foot two drift fishing rod. This also comes in a spinning model in that same nine foot two rating. But I like this rod a lot because it has a fast action, it casts really well when you're casting some of these lighter presentations, but also the amount of sensitivity that comes with that fast action rod is what's key. What I have this reeled with is a Helios reel. I like a Kaimar reel, a 3000 or a 4000 series if I'm gonna be using this spinning model. And I have a 30 pound braided line on here, a tough line. I like the 30 pound because it cuts through the water well. This tough line is really nice. It got, goes through the guides nice and smooth. And it allows me to get down under that water current and not have a big heavy 30, you know, 40 or 50 pound test that's gonna be floating to the surface while I'm trying to get my spinner or my spoon down to the bottom. The key thing I do with this, almost always, always, is I add a fluorocarbon bumper. And what I have on here is a 17 pound fluorocarbon bumper that I've jointed up with a, either a blood knot or a uni knot or an Alberto knot, whichever you can tie best. We have, again, some more stuff on our Addicted page that you can go and you can find out how to tie these knots. But I add that about six to 10 foot of fluorocarbon bumper just to cut down on visibility. And also that braid loves to wrap around your spoons and your spinners and it's very avoidable just by adding that bumper to it. So what I have here is a number five blue fox on here. I've just attached with a normal fisherman's knot. And now we're gonna step into the river and show you guys the two different kind of waters that you wanna look for when using a spinner contrary to a spoon. So why I'm gonna call this perfect spinner water is it has a good amount of current, a broken surface, and it has a lot of structure that I can cover with that spinner and allow it to go right along the bottom, spinning and engaging that blade and getting down in the strike zone for a long distance of time. Spinners can be fished in super fast water and rapids and slow water and big deep pools. But really what you want is something that has broken surface and a nice steady current, about four to six feet deep. Anything over that depth, you're gonna want it to be slower water so that you can actually let that spinner get down. Okay, so the way I wanna cast when I'm using a spinner is I really wanna work my 45s. I wanna cast either 90 degrees across the river or 45 degrees up to allow that spinner to sink a little bit. But the key is you don't wanna cast and just let your spinner sink. That's when you're gonna start losing a lot more gear. Changing out the side wash hook from the, from the treble hook is gonna help you from snagging up too much, but if you just let that spinner fall towards the bottom, it's gonna hit the rocks and immediately snag. So what I like to do is I start my cast up at 45 degrees angle, it hits the water, I immediately reel it tight, and I keep my rod tip pointed right at that spinner the whole time. What that does is it allows me to have all that sensitivity and all that feel from that spinner blade all the way up my line into my hand. And that's what's gonna be key is being able to identify bottom use that by identifying the bottom and then drift that spinner along that bottom, keeping it within range of the strike zone. So that's what I'm gonna do. And a lot of times what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a short cast, I'm gonna to go to the middle, and then I'm gonna go far. Which the difference between that and the spoon is the spoon you're gonna pretty much cast the same distance every time. But what that's gonna do by doing that close middle far and working your 45s is help you use a grid system almost cover every little bit of structure that you have in front of you. That's why these hardware techniques can be so effective because you cover a lot more water than using a bobber or something and just going straight in a line down the river. So I made that first cast of 45. I'm gonna go a little bit further. I'm gonna engage that spinner immediately, pointing my tip right at it and just letting it follow through until I start to feel bottom. And the way you're gonna control the depth of that spinner is by having your rod tip up and your rod tip down. So by lifting it to the surface and putting my rod tip up, that spinner comes up to the surface. By putting it down, it's gonna pull it down to the bottom and allow the current to get it down to the bottom and in the strike zone. So that's what I'm gonna do every time. I'm gonna cast again, I'm gonna put my third cast a little bit farther. I'm gonna keep my tip down, point it right at the spinner. It's gonna allow it to get nice and deep. And I'm gonna follow that spinner all the way through until I feel it tap bottom. And that's when I'm gonna lift my rod tip up. And when you feel that tap and you lift that rod tip up, it's gonna bring it up in the strike zone a little bit and it's gonna keep you from snagging up. So now that I've made my three casts, I'm gonna 
reel in and I'm gonna take three big steps down river and that's gonna help me create this grid. Take three big steps, do that close middle far, close middle far, and you do that all the way through the run, whichever run it is, depending if it's short or long. And that way you're gonna be able to, again, cover that grid system and hit every bit of structure that you have in front of you. All right, so I've continued my close middle far, close middle far, and continue to work my way down through the run. But what I'm gonna do before I switch gears here, guys, is I'm gonna show you the main difference in between a spinner and a spoon and why the presentation is so much different. So look on over here. You can see once the current catches the spinner, it starts to move, it creates a lot of vibration, and it honestly creates a lot of noise down there. That blade is hitting that bell, which can actually affect the fish's aggression. It'll actually piss them off a little bit. A lot of times I say with these spinners, a lot of, really they're not thinking it's any sort of natural prey. All it really does is annoys them and gets in their way. If I did this in front of the camera and you guys were here in front of me, what would you do if I threw that in front of your face? You'd swat at it with your hands. Fish don't have hands, obviously. So what they do, you get that blade down there, it's irritating, it gets in their face. They swat at it to go and try to kill it to get it out of their way. And in turn, that sidewash hook sticks them in the mouth and you land the fish and we all high five. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna go up here and grab the spoon and show you guys the differences in the kind of water you wanna fish with that. Okay guys, so now that I have the spoon on, I'm gonna show you here the difference in the action. So the spoon's in the water and you can see that slow low. What this really does is it creates a lot slower presentation in front of these fish and it gives them a lot more time to look at it. You can see how that just waves back and forth and if at times, if you reel a little bit faster, it'll start to do a full 360 but the perfect presentation you want with that spoon is that very slow lope, where it kind of just shakes back and forth and kicks that water disturbance back towards those fish's face. And now because of that slow lope, you want to look for a little bit different kinds of water current. You don't want necessarily super fast water because you don't want that spoon down there going in a 360 like so. You want a nice steady current about walking speed with a lot of structure to cover. And the difference in how we're going to fish this spoon is one, you're never going to really cast up river. You're not gonna get the effective presentation. It's gonna fall down into the rocks and you're not gonna get your swing. You don't wanna get a belly in your line at all when you're swinging these spoons. What I'm gonna do this time is I'm either gonna cast at 90 or a 45 degree angle downriver, and I'm gonna make about the same distance cast every single time. I'm not gonna practice as much my close middle far technique. And why that is, is because I'm gonna use this as a radar scan. I'm gonna cast the same distance every time and I'm gonna swing it across and then I'm gonna fish with my feet. I'm gonna cast the same distance at 45 swing it across, take two steps. Same distance across, swing it across, two steps. And what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna effectively cover all that water down below me and be able to kind of gauge where those fish are gonna be. The thing about the spoon is you can fish it a lot closer into the bank and you wanna be sure to finish in your swing. Being that said, what we do basically with the spoon is swing them, not so much drift them. So what I'm gonna do here now, you guys can see I have this nice slow moving tail out good structure, a lot of big boulders around. I'm gonna identify those boulders and I'm gonna start breaking this run down with the spoon, slowly working my way down. So again, my first cast is gonna pretty much be all the way across the river, just shy of 40 or 90 degrees. I'm gonna engage that spoon and I'm gonna kinda of keep my rod tip pointed at an upriver angle. And I'm gonna allow that small belly to form and start to swing that spoon right And You can obviously see right off the bat, there's not as much action on my tip. That spoon's down there just loping, and again, a lot slower presentation, which gives those fish a lot longer to look at it, where that spinner is just rapidly spinning past their face, and they have to make a decision right now to go get it. The spoon will actually sit down there in front of those fish's face and actually get, get them more aggravated at times and inquire a different bite. Now that I've swung that all the way into the bank here, I'm gonna take my two steps down, make the same distance cast, about just shy of 90 degrees, I'm gonna engage that spoon with a little rod tip snap, keeping my rod tip pointed out towards the middle of the river and allowing that current to grab my line and start to swing that spoon across. And you can see here, I'm really trying to identify my structure. I see those boulders, I see the rocks, I see the structures and the humps, and I'm gonna to try to swing that spoon all the way across and into them. What you can do once you get it closer to the bank, again, is control your depth with your rod tip. If I want that thing low and down towards the bottom, I'm gonna put my rod tip down. If I want it high and up towards the surface, I can do like so, I lift up and that thing comes right to the surface there. So now that I've made that cast, I'm gonna take another two big steps down river. I'm gonna make that same long distance cast across just under 90 degrees. Engage that spoon and let it do its work swinging down through this tail out. So the main thing is guys, and what I want you to take away from this is choosing the right type of water to fish the spinners and spoons. 
They're both great tools to have in your box and they both catch a lot of fish, but one can be fished in a different water than the other. And that's what we've shown you here today. If you guys want to see more videos like this, go down here, check out our Addicted Fishing page and check out our Addicted tutorials. We do all kinds of tutorials on salmon, trout, steelhead, and basically everything there is to fish for all over the world. Thank you so much for tuning in today, you guys. Hit that thumbs up down here. Be sure to subscribe and turn the bell notification on. And you guys stay fishing, we'll see you out there.